Okay, I want to make a quick video showing you how to get started with React. Now, there's a couple of ways that you can use React. One is to use NPM and install the whole thing, set it up on your project. But React can also be used um, just with the scripts themselves. If you want to do that, what you can do is have a web page. So let's say in here I have, uh, I'll just create a file called index.html. This is my web page. And inside of here, I had a couple of script tags. And the source for the script tags, there's going to be two of them. I'm going to go to the unpackage CDN, Content Delivery Network. And there's lots of different scripts that are stored here. We want to get the React script, and they're all written like this. This is the uh, the format right here. I don't know how well you can see that there. Unpackage.com slash, and then the name of the package, so React. We want React and React DOM, and then at with the version number. If you're not sure what the latest version number is, you can just put at React, and it will bring it up. It'll automatically route you to the latest version. So we have here React at 16.51. And inside the UMD folder, there's the two versions. We've got the development version, which is 87K, or the production version, which is a minified one, which is 9.7K. Huge difference. Um, React, this one, absolutely fine to use um, for all your development work. Just make sure that you switch over to the production one before you actually release it. Now, using React and React DOM, these two scripts, so here it is, the development one, copy link, and we'll paste it in here. Now I have access to React and JSX from in my content, and I can build my website as I would normally build it. I just now have the ability to also add little bits and pieces so I could create one React component and then use that as part of my website. Okay, so that's sort of the edge case. That doesn't get used as much. What we want to do is actually build a project that is based on React. So I'm going to just delete this file. Don't save. There we go. And I'm going to go back to my terminal. There are actually several different uh, tools that you can use, but probably the most common one is a tool called Create React App. This is kind of like, uh, if you've done anything with Cordova, you've got the Cordova Create, and you create your project, it gives you the scaffolding and all the scripts and everything that you need to get started. This works the same way for React. Create Rack, React App will create your project folder. You just provide a name for the project, and it does the work. But before I can actually call this command, I need to load it onto my computer. So two ways of doing that. One, I can use npm and install this globally. So we could say npm install dash g for global and then create React app. Works fine, installs it globally. I have it there, I can call it whenever I want. I'm in charge of updating it. If there's a new version of React, I'd have to reinstall or uh, use npm update to update this copy. Um, but absolutely nothing wrong with that, and it gives you everything that you need. The other alternative to this is npx. So npx was a tool that was, I think, in about version 5.2 of npm. npx was added as something that would install something into memory. So it's not going to actually download and use the files. It's not going to save them to your operating system. It just downloads it into memory. It's like you're running a node script. So it's in memory now. It's running a node. And once it's done, the program shuts down. And you no longer have Create React, React App in memory. So let's do that one. NPX Create React App My Proj. This is going to run the exact same way that the npm install and then running create react app. This part at the end here, this create react app right here. This command by itself is what you'd run if you'd done the npm install, or we're putting npx in front of it so I don't have to install it. 
Now I do have it installed, but it's not going to make a difference here. Uh, you'll notice yarn here. Yarn is another package manager and I'm going to make an, a separate video about that. Uh, so this has installed, if we scroll way back up here, all the way to the top of everything that was installed <laughs> to make React work. Um, React, React DOM, and React Script. Those are the three main packages um, where all these other dependencies come from. These are the three main packages that we need to run. These are the ones that we're going to use in our React pages. All right, so we have all this stuff installed. Success. So I have now created my proj. So I've got a folder now called my proj inside my MAD9135 folder, which is right here. So in brackets, here's my proj. I open that up and I have all these files inside of here. Inside the source folder, this is where I'm going to do all my work. So we have index.js. Index.js has, let me expand this a little bit. There we go, make it a little easier to read. This is the starting point. Like most projects that are run with a package.json file, the default starting point is the index.js file. We can see dependencies, React, React DOM, React Script. Those are the three things that uh, we saw on the command line that were being installed. We've got those, so we can run all of this stuff right here. So React and React DOM, that's for the stuff that's happening on the web page. React Scripts is how we package and bundle. This Create React app is doing a lot of the heavy lifting for us in our project. So we can run npm start, which is going to call React Scripts start, and that will start our project running. Okay, so let's cd into our myproj folder. As it says down here, you can say cd myproj. And we can say yarn start if you've got yarn installed, but like I said, I'm going to do another video about that one. Let's just do the old npm start, which was this script right here. Okay, we run that, starting the development server, and here it is. This is the actual React app that's up and running on localhost 3000, or we can use this IP address. Uh, this is my local IP address on my machine. This is the React app, and it tells you right here, if you edit source slash app.js, that's the file that we've got. That's the, the main file. So index, first file that runs, and you can see here it's rendering something called app. App is right here, is coming from the file dot slash app. So inside the same folder, there's a file called app.js. That's the one we want. That's the one that's creating this component. And it is being loaded into document get element by ID root inside of our public index.html file. Here it is. So inside the index.html file in the public folder, we have this div with the ID root. The index is saying load the component called app into there. So let's take a look at app.js. Here we are. And this is how you're going to be building all your React. It all starts from right here and it all follows the same pattern. So we import React we import component from React. So these two libraries are being brought in from the script react.js. Um, you can bring in graphics. You can bring in CSS files to add them as styles into your content. There is a single class, whatever the name is. In our case, app.js, the class is called app, and we're exporting app. This is actually what's being used back on index.js. This app that we're importing and using right here, that's the one that we are exporting and we are defining right here. So it extends component, which is react.component. If you changed this, you would actually have to write this. And this would work as well. If I save this rebuilds and there's my page, it just refreshed. So it works the same way. Okay, inside your class, 
there needs to be one method at least called render. This render method can have some other code in it as well, but it is going to return and notice the parentheses here. These are very important. Inside these parentheses, we're going to have all the HTML that we want rendered on the page. And we could load other components in here. So we'd import them and then we'd add the components in here. So, but for now, feel free to edit this HTML, edit the CSS, and you'll see it's very much like building any other web page. It's just we follow this pattern where we do imports, we have a class that extends component, it has a render method that returns HTML inside the parentheses, and then we export that class. Okay, so hope that gets you started. Hope that lets you uh, have enough information so that you can get started playing around and starting to build your website. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. I will be making more videos on React, getting into actually building components, uh, working with Yarn instead of NPM. It's just another package manager um, and a lot of other things about React. For now, uh, have fun with this.